I want to talk briefly about two self-reinforcing feedback loops, either of which has the potential to cause human extinction in the very near term. The first of those is exponential rise of atmospheric methane, widely reported in the referee journal literature, paper by Michael Jennings in Global Policy several years ago now, a suite, a suite, not one, but several amplifying feedback mechanisms or self-reinforcing feedback loops have been, have been triggered. They're underway. And even the conservative scientific community admits as much. In July of 2013, NASA reported through direct observations using satellites that the methane plumes bubbling out of the Arctic Ocean were as much as 150 kilometers across. Imagine you're in a sailing ship, and as far as you can see, in every direction, the ocean is bubbling. It looks like ginger ale. That's what a plume 150 kilometers across looks like. These are direct observations. These aren't models. That exponential rise of atmospheric methane coinciding with the atmospheric rise of other greenhouse gases since 1750 leads Paul Beckwith, climate scientist at the University of Ottawa, to conclude that we're headed for a global average temperature rise of at least 5 degrees Celsius within a decade or two, based on that one self-reinforcing feedback loop. And he says, you know, the International Energy Agency says business as usual, maintaining civilization in, in its current form leads up to up to a six degree Celsius temperature rise by 2050. So in late November 2014 when he made this prediction, he said, I'm just adding this one self-reinforcing feedback loop. It's not that big a deal to five or six above baseline in a decade or two. <clears throat> well, that's, that's a one person's observation and prediction and it has not been vetted through the referee journal literature. It's not a conservative source, so I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to talk with respect to the science from here on out, just about one self-reinforcing feedback loop that I haven't mentioned much in previous talks or my previous writing, and that's moistening of the upper troposphere. Water vapor is actually the most abundant greenhouse gas. It's 97 percent of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is water vapor. And water vapor serves to trap long wave radiation, so it can't escape. It's the blankets we keep putting on, and we, we don't think much about water vapor because it's just out there. It's just humid or it's not. We know about carbon dioxide, and that's what's made all the news, so we've tended to ignore water vapor, but, but even the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences paper in there indicates that this is the largest known feedback mechanism, is moistening the upper troposphere. And a paper in Skeptical Science, another very conservative course, concludes that, that, a, that a one degree size temperature rise as a result of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, really when we add on these other self-reinforcing feedback loops, is as much as 3C. And bear in mind, we're over 1.5C at this point. So when we include these other feedbacks, which they don't mention, but which certainly include methane and a few of the others that I haven't mentioned, then we're headed for 3C as a result. Well, we're at 1.5C as a result of carbon dioxide. That suggests to me that if we add together moistening of the upper troposphere plus collapse of, of civilization, which will result either from temperature rise or from the financial collapse that is underway and will undoubtedly be complete soon. You know, it doesn't really matter whether we look at this from the financial perspective or not. The ability to grow grains is already threatened and a temperature rise because of moistening of the upper troposphere or methane release is going to cause the temperature rise to be so great that we won't be able to grow grains and grains are the basis for civilization. Without grains, we don't sustain this set of loving arrangements. So just collapse of civilization plus moistening the open troposphere and those other innocuous other feedbacks that are mentioned leads to six, degree, six to eight degrees C above where we are now. Well, the midpoint of that is right there, Jurassic Park. The high end of that is right there. where we were at 252 million years ago when during the gray dying we had a global average temperature rise of just over 10 degrees Celsius that occurred over a span of somewhere between 20,000 and 80,000 years. This time it's occurring in a matter of years. In fact, equilibrium between global average temperature and moistening of the upper troposphere is complete in a matter of weeks. Not months, not years, certainly not decades, certainly not 20 to 80,000 years, weeks. So that's how rapidly this particular self-reinforcing feedback loop operates. 
So we can pretty much ignore methane. We can admit that methane is one of those other feedbacks that is mentioned in the skeptical science paper. And there are 60 some others to go along with it. We can just include moistening of the upper troposphere and collapse of civilization, which results from those high temperatures and make, uh, make us incapable of growing grains at scale. And boom, we're at Jurassic Park in a very short period of time. Finally, I want to mention again how rapidly events could transpire. We currently are experiencing ice melt in the Arctic that's two weeks ahead of any previous year. 2012 was the minimum ice cover in the Arctic in human history. We haven't had an ice-free Arctic in the entire run of our genus, the genus Homo, on the planet, 2.8 million years since we had an ice-free Arctic. And it looks like we're headed for an ice-free Arctic. The US Naval Postgraduate School predicts that we will have an ice-free Arctic in 2016, plus or minus three years. So I'd say we dodged a bullet for the last three years, but it's coming. The headline, and I think it was the Christian Science Monitor for it, where I first ran across this, this prediction, the headline says, um, in 2016, 84 years ahead of schedule. Because you know, everything happens in 2100. Right, every other climate scientist talks about how dire things are going to be at 2100, like on January 1st. Well, that's absurd. Nature doesn't have a schedule. And, and even if nature has a schedule, she didn't check with us. So 84 years ahead of schedule, there's going to be an ice-free Arctic. This is, these are the data up to very recently with respect to aerial extent. Even the rare, very conservative U.S. Geological Survey says we could have an ice-free Arctic this year. So it could be that we're headed for an ice-free Arctic. If so, I don't see any way to avoid that 50 gigaton burst of methane that field researcher Nikolai Tajshkova says is highly possible at any time. I don't see how we can avoid that. That's a big burst of methane that once it circulates around the globe, which would take about a year, we'd, we'd observe about a 1.3 C global average temperature rise plus the 1.6 we're at right now, that takes us to 2.9. We might have had humans on the planet in as little as 2.2. That's going to be inconvenient. It's going to happen in a very short period of time, about a year and a half from now, if we have an ice-free Arctic, and if there is this 50 gigaton burst of methane that results from that ice-free Arctic. So that means somewhere between four and six above today, which is way far above baseline, then people have seriously considered human extinction occurring in a very, very short period of time. Way too rapidly for humans or any other organism to keep up. So it could be, if we have an ice-free Arctic, and if as a consequence we have that eruption of methane, that first 50 gigaton burst of methane, it won't be the last, then it could be we experience a warm planet beyond which humans are able to persist in a very, very short period of time. Now I'm not suggesting that every human will be dead a year, a year and a half from now, even if we have an ice-free Arctic. 